Hey guys, so it is Friday newsletter time. I got several suggestions on Wednesday's uh, coffee and questions, or coffee and demo, I guess, that you'd like to see me finish this sign off, this uh, Divine Mercy sign. So that's what we're going to do. I, uh, I have gone and, um, baby, if you can pan down here, I've gone and carved my other rows, just like uh, the layout that I showed you guys, the other one that I had carved, I carved exactly the same on the other end. So now this sign has the actual rows at both ends. And I want to talk about, uh, I got someone, someone asked me, why did I use the the SC50 bit rather than the profile bit. I could have maybe used the profile bit, but I just found, and let me show you why. So this is, I'm kind of, I'm you sorry. You said you weren't going to. I know, I'm sorry. I'm, I got it. So this is the SC50. And you can see how, uh, one thing I did want to show is how it kind of builds up, carving through the tape, the blue tape and the, the adhesive, but that stuff just comes right off. It just, it just pulls right off. Yeah. I screw you. You're telling them and I'm trying to zoom and you're pulling it off. Anyway, it just scratches right off so I don't even worry about it and I, cl I clean it of course with my my brass brush which is actually that's the reason it has kind of a brass look to it. But anyway, so that's the the uh, SC50. Now if you can come over here babe, I want to show them why I, show, I use the SC50. Down in a couple of these spots down here I think the profile bit, in order to get into some of that detail, it would have been really tough to do with the profile bit. Now this is the profile bit. So you can see that this cuts a little bit wider. And I am going to use this profile bit, but I'm going to go around everything again and make a good fat line around it. And you guys will see that because I'll do it on camera. So that's the reason I do that. Now, one thing that I do is down in this area, are you still with me, babe? Kinda? No? Sorry. Down in this area right here, you can see how tight it is, and it would be really easy to get confused on what I want to be outset and what I want to cut away. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll take a Sharpie pen and just mark that. Just so I know, not in any particular way, but just so I know what's going to be background and, you know, wh what I want to be cut away and what I want to stand out. And this, obviously, I don't really need to even do that. I can do it up here, I guess, but I don't really need to even do that. So that's what I use as a little trick to help me uh, keep track of what I really want to cut away when I'm making something like this with detail. So don't, uh, that's a kind of a uh, trick that I use on a regular basis. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come back um, in the next scene and we'll start doing some layout on this thing and um, we'll get that done and move on to carving. Be right back. All right, guys and gals. So now we're going to start the layout process on this as far as the lettering going, goes. Uh, one thing I did want to say is someone called actually um, yesterday, yesterday the day before. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, and, and let me know that um, I had divine spell wrong. I think I probably, I would like to think that I would have caught it when I checked out against my customer's uh, paperwork where he had it D-I-V-I-N-E but um, I appreciate the call anyway so uh, I swapped out an I uh, for the E that I had there so in case some of you others caught that and didn't say anything anyway so now what I'm going to do I want these letters centered top to bottom so I've kind of already made my uh, set my square where I want it and I'm going to draw a line So I know where to put my letters. And then remember, I got that cross that I got to deal with that's got to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out from one end to the other and leave the center open and leave me as much room as I can, as I can get for that cross that's going to be in the center. So here's what I'm going to do. Starting from this end, I know I'm going to have a line around here and I need room to get around that so I'm going to come about an inch and a half in 
from the edge of that rose <laughs> like way at the other end of the board now I'm gonna move to the other end of the board okay yeah. I'm gonna move slowly and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna come in an inch and a half from this end then I'm just gonna lay my letters out from both ends again I want that line right where the edge of the widest part of the letter is and you guys I'm gonna be using the profile bit on this so I know as long as I can get the profile bit and the, here's that issue with the R I've got the bottom of the R right on this line and I'll extend that down just by hand and you guys will see me do it now any of you guys that have been watching for a while know that I um, that this when I'm using this pine now I'm gonna go down to the other end when I'm using this pine first thing I do when I get it back because I spray black on it when I'm doing my layout first thing I do when I get it back from wherever I buy it Lowe's or wherever uh, is I get sanding sealer on it so this has a coat of sanding sealer on the front and the back and the edges now, um, so now I'm going to I'm going to spray that, but I have to make sure. Oh, there's my cross right there. Got to make sure my cross is going to fit in there well, and that gives me plenty of room for that cross. It's going to be outset, so I I know I'm okay there. I check my uh, check my layout, and I know my spelling is correct. Now we are outside. In case you guys hadn't noticed. We're outside and we got a wind coming from the north right now so what I'm gonna do I've got I don't I didn't know if you showed this yet I uh, this this my workbench and I put a uh, uh, like a wind block up just a piece of half inch uh, particle board as a wind block but I'm probably not gonna spray this whole thing I'm just gonna get a couple of these letters that are here by the, the actual wind block and I'm gonna take the rest of it inside but here's what I uh, another thing that I do because this um, because this pine does have uh, a tendency to bleed if you spray it too heavy even with sanding sealer then what I'm gonna do is give myself the best chance as possible and masking tape is fairly cheap so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask off you know the biggest part of this stuff so no black gets on that pine that I really don't want it to be there so now you don't have to do this and I don't always do it but it is something that um, that I do uh, just to make sure that I don't have any bleeding issues I'm pretty good with a spray can so I'm pretty got a pretty light touch but you those of you that are fairly new to using a spray can and you find that you get bleeding issues it's probably due to spraying it too heavy uh, or yeah spraying it too heavy um, on this pine now all of this is going to be cut away anyway it's all going to be background everything in here because I'm cutting these letters out set so now I know a lot of you guys say well why don't you just tape the whole thing lay your letters on top and then carve through the tape that way you don't get any and you can do that and I've done that it just gets kind of cumbersome I'd rather not carve through tape unless I absolutely have to so um, I do that for artwork because the, I really need that line there but for layout letters I don't I don't necessarily want to lay out on top of tape and then have to deal with all of that I would rather um, do my layout with nothing on the board other than my black if I can get by with it so with this spray can now we've got some wind coming from so those of you that are fairly new this is how I do the layout when it comes to and that wind is really swirling so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that Y away so you can kind of see that's going to be my layout so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this we're going to get off camera I'm going to take this and lay the rest of it out I'll, I'll again I'll tape off the rest of this um, so my, that my cross isn't uh, uh, you know we'll lay out all right on there uh, so we'll be right back and we'll work on that cross
Okay, folks, we are back. So I've got the all of my letters laid out. I've uh, put my cross where I wanted it. Now I had an option to do this with carbon paper, of course. I could have done it that way, but I thought, well, I'll go ahead and, and carve this just like I did on the roses. So I've got my profile bit that I showed you guys before, not the SC50, but the profile bit. And I'm gonna use that because there's plenty of room to get all the way around that cross. Cross, again, is gonna be outset. So I've got it set at, you guys know that been watching for a while I don't necessarily set by depth but um, just for uh, your purposes I went ahead and set it at a quarter and quarter of an inch deep something like that I think it'll be about right if not then I'll adjust it so here we go <laughs> Okay, that's not too bad. I may go back, once I get the paper off and get all of this stuff off, I may go back and, and readjust that and kind of tighten up some of those lines. We'll see, we'll kind of see how it looks. This should all peel off pretty easily. It should. my razor knife out this time yeah. so here's what I was talking about the other day guys is I just take the edge of my razor knife and just scrape the end of it and it should give you something to hold on to and be able to peel that off just like that huh voila <laughs> voila just like that now I think what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll just kind of touch those up and uh, just kind of sure up those lines a little bit. A couple of those are a little bit wobbly. I probably, if I did it again, I probably wouldn't carve quite as quite that deep, but I was already into it. I knew I had plenty of room, um, but the fact that I was carving a quarter of an inch deep um, meant it was a little bit tougher to hold a line, So, um, but I didn't do too bad. I think it's uh, it definitely is something that I want to go back and touch up. 
but um, so I'll come back and do that uh, actually I'll do that right now since we're all set here got to make sure nothing is gonna nothing is gonna impede my router base it's gonna be in the way yeah, a little piece of clear right here that feels pretty good sitting there the whole time I thought I threw that away all right so that is it for that now we will move on to uh, outlining those roses with uh, with a profile bit and uh, um, get on to moving on to the letters so we'll be back shortly Thank you. 
Okay guys, well you can get kind of an idea of what I'm doing here. I, I'm just going to go ahead and do that uh, that one letter, a couple different reasons why. Number one, I can feel that bit, and I don't know if you guys could notice, but uh, that was getting a little bit tough to carve. Uh, I, j I could just feel it, that it wasn't quite as sharp as it needs to be. So being as I have the option, I can sharpen that thing and I'll come back and, uh, and do a little bit more on it. Um, but I'm going to sharpen that bit first. And second of all, is it is kind of late in the afternoon right now the Sun is sitting behind Vicki right there and as much as I love these cheaters that magnifier is starting to try and burn a hole through my lip so that's something I've never had to deal with before it's a good thing I don't have a mustache because it'd be on fire right now so it just so happens that we're filming late in the day and uh, the Sun is doing a uh, deal with that magnifier magnifier and uh, my lip is a little warm so we're gonna shut down and we're gonna finish this up tomorrow but we'll get it on camera so um, we will see you in the morning bye all right we are back you guys and uh, so now it is in the next morning so the Sun is kind of it's coming up over the we're in the shade right now, but uh, I think we're going to be good as far as light goes, as far as sound goes. I want to apologize for the, the wind noise on the lapel mic uh, when we were doing it yesterday. Our wind was coming up and I didn't realize it, but um, hopefully you, it won't bother too many of you. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to carve this C um, and then I'll come back and we'll uh, we'll start doing the cleanup on this. The other thing that I wanted to mention too is I forgot to draw the lines top and bottom. We were kind of running out of time yesterday. Top and bottom. You can see here on the R as the camera pans down you can see that I drew my lines top and bottom and then I, I like I talked about I extended the bottom of that R down so it's even with the bottom of all the other letters. So I'm going to carve this C right now and then and I'll do the Y off camera and we'll come back and do some cleanup. All right, let's get after it here. So you can see it cut much better today because I sharpened this cutter uh, this morning and, and cut some more stuff on here. So I um, hope that gives you a kind of an idea. A lot of times, like I said before, I'll stay away from the letter and then come back and just kind of trim it up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this Y off, uh, off camera. We'll come back and we'll, do, uh, we'll start the cleanup process on, uh, on this stuff. See you in a minute. 
Okay guys, I'm going to do my outline around this rose and I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup so you guys can see what this looks like. Okay folks, so I have kind of give you an idea of what how I do my background and that fat line around there. Sorry about the shadow, that's just part of um, filming outside. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this background up um, and then we'll come back and get into the next process. Bye. Hi folks. Okay, we're back. So I um, I want to I got to go over a couple details that I left out because we we're just trying to get through this thing. We are obviously now back inside, a little bit better control, hopefully better sound. Our sounds on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and a little bit better lighting. So a uh, couple things I want to make sure, in case you guys uh, weren't aware, when I did the background on this sign, I was using the bigger router, the uh, 618, the DeWalt 618. I was using the small uh, DWP 611 for uh, the profiling, for all of the detail work in the profiling. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, and now I'll, I'll do the scalloping. The other thing is I forgot to mention what bit I was using for doing the, the actual background. So this is our 90 degree V-groove bit, in case you guys aren't familiar with it. Just try and turn it a little bit there so you can get uh, an idea. So that's what does all of this texture stuff. And you saw the way I was moving it around. Anyway, so the sign is all carved. Um, we're pretty much set now as far as all the carving goes. The next thing I want to talk about is if you look down in here you can see all these little pieces, kind of loose pieces. Make sure that you get yourself a good stiff bristle brush and really brush that thing out. Otherwise, if you don't, then you're going to end up with a lot of loose stuff back there in that background and it will, um, then if it comes out after you spray, you'll end up with a bunch of white spots back there. So make sure and uh, uh, make sure and brush it good with a stiff bristle brush. I'm not going to do that right now. You kind of saw the way I did that here. I try and go in a circular motion and then up from a couple different angles. 
every angle I can think of. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my 618, my bigger router, I've got it set up with my scalloping bit and that's what this customer wanted, specifically wanted scalloping. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to build it up. These are my little, uh, gosh, what did I call these? Carving boards, I guess. Just that, uh, that same stuff on here stuck on both sides on a couple of pieces of uh, half inch MDF. I'm just going to build it up. I probably would be okay, but I'm just going to build it up a little bit. So I'm going to do scalloping on this and uh, I'm actually going to, I think I'll kind of move the board as I go. So I'll give, give my wife a little chance to be able to follow me with the camera. Think you're good? All right, here we go. I think that's all I really need to do on camera, guys. We're going to go ahead and shut the camera off, and I'll finish this off, uh, finish this up off camera, and then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, we're back, and we have, I forgot to mention before, just one real quick thing, is this is our, um, our chamfer bit, our 45 degree bevel slash chamfer bit. So that's the bit that I used for the scalloping. Uh, and you guys saw how I did that uh, on the last scene. Uh, now I just I got to turn this over and I got to put a little a slight chamfer on the back side. And uh, so I'm going to do that right now. That looks about right. Okay folks, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish this off, off camera, we'll come back, oh yeah, and we'll come back and we'll, uh, on the next scene, we'll come back and we'll spray it black. Alright, I want to get some close up just because I love this song. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with the way it came out so far. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and, and finish this off and uh, show you what it looks like final product be right back one thing I wanted to go over guys are actually a couple different things um, make sure that after you get your your brushing done in the same process make sure and look and see if you have any high spots that your sander is going to make little white islands in your background so what you want to do is just you can use a little hand carving tool you can use a screwdriver you can use a pocket knife just make sure and don't chimp off any anything that you don't want to be gone um, but uh, I do that and what what I do is I normally hold it at an angle so that I can see down there, see those high spots. I've pretty much already done that. You can see I've got some masking done here. Um, again, kind of the same philosophy as when I was doing my layout. Uh, whatever I can do to give myself the best chances of no bleeding on there, I generally have not any issues with, with bleeding because I'm pretty good with a spray can after about 50 years of using one. Um, but if you, if you kind of struggle with that a little bit, then go ahead and mask off some areas that uh, that will give you a little bit better chance of not having any bleeding. But the biggest thing uh, with, and I've seen this a lot lately especially, uh, is when you, if you've got bleeding, uh, if you're using pine and you're getting bleeding, generally speaking, I bet, I'd say probably eight times out of ten, it's because you're spraying too heavy. So this is what I use for black and uh, I'm just going to spray this background and uh, and the scalloping and I'm going to mask off the rest of this and then I'll get it sprayed and um, but I can't I don't want to do that indoors here this stuff is pretty uh, pretty volatile although here's what I'm going to do now I'm talking around myself 
See the way I'm doing that, guys? Nice and easy. Real short spurts. You get that too heavy, you're going to have bleeding. Now, I'm going to go back and do the rest of this. You can see that's a little bit light, so I'll touch that again. Make sure and keep this. Yeah, I know it's it, the fumes add up quick in here. But anyway, this stuff comes out really, you can use the ink or you can use this primer stuff. So I'm not gonna spray any more indoors here because the, the fumes. So I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff sprayed. Oh, the other thing is, don't forget to, um, if you've got sharp corners, take your sanding block and, and kinda grind those corners down a little bit. Otherwise, uh, you could take a chance on, uh, once that's black, if that gets knocked off, uh, if it's sharp corners, it uh, becomes a problem. That's all I do is I just kind of touch those sharp corners with that sanding block. Alright guys, we'll be back and uh, we'll uh, see what this thing looks like when it's sanded off. Okie doke, we're back here, and so now we're all dried up. Uh, I'm just gonna peel off this masking tape here, and you'll, you can kinda see that it, uh, if you use this masking tape, again, you know, I didn't have to use it, but you guys that tend to kinda get some bleeding and stuff, I figured I would go ahead and do this. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Um, but the main thing is just don't overspray. But if if you have a tendency to do that, then this masking tape takes a little extra time, but you make up for it by not having to sand as much. So I'm just gonna peel off this masking tape and take me a couple minutes here. Uh, so what else can we talk about while I'm doing this? Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We will have, I know many of you have talked about this, and now that Vicki has been working her little tail off the last couple days, coming up with some layout templates for, uh, for Christmas. So we got, uh, I think we're only about a day away, probably on Monday. We're hoping that on Monday on Coffee and Questions, we can actually debut a new set of uh, layout templates that are all Christmas based. Is that right? Mm -hmm. we'll probably show them in December. Yeah, we might, uh, we might show the next um, premium member free template. Alright, so I think I've got pretty much all that tape off there. So you can see I didn't I didn't mask off all of it, everything, but let's get to sanding and see how this thing's gonna turn out. Kind of curious. Okay, uh, just to kind of reiterate, I'm using a 40 grit uh, paper on my sander. Um, I'm gonna sand off a little bit more, get it pretty much like this is here on the whole board. I'll do that off camera, then I'll come back and we'll do our second sand. But again, any of you guys that have been watching for a while know that I just sand probably somewhere around this much, maybe 80% of the ink off with a rough belt. Then I come back with a, with a uh, 80 grit belt and uh, take off the rest of it. So um, we'll be back in a minute and uh, we'll get to the next uh, sand. 
Okay, now guys, I've got my little uh, Porter Cable Armadillo Sander here, and uh, I forgot to show before, I'm gonna clean the belt here and kinda get this belt a little cleaner. These little rubber sanding belt cleaners work real well. All right, so let's sand off the rest. Okay guys, we're gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna go ahead and finish sanding this, the rest of this thing, then uh, for the reveal, uh, we'll turn the camera back on, blow it off, you guys can see what it looks like as a finished product. All right, folks, so it's all sanded. We are gonna blow it off. This is my favorite part here. Here we go. I can't see it, how to come out. Boy, there's dust everywhere in the air here. Sorry, guys. That's the part about being inside. There's a lot of dust in this sanding operation. Actually, I'm kind of happy with that. I think the customer is going to go back after I'm done with it. He's going to go back and paint the the roses and maybe the letters. That's why I did everything outset because he wanted the availability to be able to go and paint the surface of stuff. I really like those roses. Okay, guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, anything I can help with, let me know. Um, you're seeing this on Friday, even though it's not Friday today, but you're seeing it on Friday. So tomorrow morning on Saturday, we'll have uh, Dad's um, country music memories. So hope you guys can join us. Thank you uh, again for watching. If you like this, if it was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Please share our videos as much as you can. We're always trying to grow our uh, subscribership. Our channel's pretty small. We're trying to grow it. So whatever you guys can do to help, we appreciate it. And uh, follow me on Instagram. And we'll see you again on uh, Coffee and Questions on Monday morning. Have a great one, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.